There are a few nations, one could argue, that should own the name the spiritual home of motorsport more than Italy. Motor racing took the nation by storm in the early 20th century, capturing the hearts, the minds, and the imaginations of the people. Legendary circuits dot its landscape from Monza to Mugello, Torino, Pescara, the Millimilia, and of course Targa Florio's Piccolo della Maderne. It seems that there's not a town or a village that at some point had a motor racing circuit of their own, the vast majority being road and street courses in and around the town. Perhaps it's the picturesque vistas which play as a backdrop for stunning machinery or a rooted passion for poetic competition. Motorsports in Italy fit together, and the result is always stunning. And now the sim racing world has been gifted a wonderful locale to experience a bit of that Italian magic. This is the Circuito di Pasilipo, home of the Napoli Grand Prix. The Napoli Grand Prix was first run in 1934 around the streets of Pasilipo and was run up until the war. Racing resumed on the same circuit in 1948 and continued until 1957. The race never achieved top-level status, but instead held Voit Tourette and sports car races. Nevertheless, greats such as Fangio, Moss, Ascari, and Nuvolari all raced at the circuit. The Talotrax has been working on this circuit for quite a long time and used real LiDAR data, uh, scan data, to build the track itself. And it shows the track is extremely detailed and accurate and follows the course that the circuit ran from 1934 through 1957. The track covers 2.5 miles, about 4 kilometers, up and down Vittoria Hill and Pasilipo, in and out of alleyways and intersections of streets. There's only one straightaway on this circuit. It's an amazing flowing track and a great place to race. Many of the roads are actually pretty wide throughout it, which is quite different from a lot of circuits at this time, but there are some narrow sections as well. Uh, and the roads themselves, from what I can understand, were actually paved or maintained specifically for this race for quite a few years. So the track surface itself is a little bit smoother than I think circuits would have been in the 1930s and 40s. The circuit reminds me a lot of Monaco. You get a great glimpse of the Adriatic Sea as you race around, but it does flow a bit nicer in my opinion and is quite a bit faster of a circuit. There's really no slow corners on it. I'm very excited and grateful that Italotrax has built this circuit. I don't think we've seen it for any other sim, certainly not in this fidelity. It's difficult to model these tracks that are in the middle of cities and parks. There's so many objects and things that you really have to get accurate. And just looking around, even with the free cam, when you're driving, you know, everything just feels really dense and compact in like a city would. Uh, and some of the scenery is so far off in the distance that it's just amazing they went through the effort to model things that are so far away. It's one of those things that most people probably would not notice uh, if those things weren't there, but with them being there, it really helps fill in and make it feel like you're really racing through the streets. And racing we shall go. I've pulled out a couple mid-30s Italian race cars. This is the Alfa Romeo Monoposto P3, a Voitrat car uh, from 1932 through 1936. And I believe this is most closely related to the 1935 version of the car, uh, but it was a very successful Grand Prix car. Tazio Nuvolari, Rudolf Cracciola, Achille Farsi, Raymond Sommer, a lot of famous drivers from the time drove this car to great success. And don't quote me on this, I haven't quite found a reliable source to tell me, but I believe this was the first single seat Grand Prix car. The P3 has a straight eight that puts out about 330 horsepower. So it's a really fast car, especially in a straight line, but it's no slouch around the corners as well. It handles really nicely around a track like this. And just looking at it, I can't imagine racing something better looking than this. So I've pulled out a little group of the Alfa Romeos and I've got a nice Maserati 6CM uh, to complement it. And we're gonna have ourselves a little Voiturette race just to see what the Napoli Grand Prix might have been like. All right, so here we are on the grid. Five laps around the Napoli circuit just to see what this is like. Starting from the back. Small grid, though. Lights are out. We're underway. We'll get a good launch off the line, bogging down a little bit as I get the accelerator down. And that will work straight forward towards the first corner up to third gear. There's only three gears in this car. You know, pretty much only use second and third around this circuit. Brake plenty early for the first corner. Just guide it on through. I got a Maserati right to my left there. Let him snake in front. The track's now gonna dive downhill. Not really a place to go too wide. Just keep it in second gear right up behind these guys. You can see the Adriatic there off to the right. 
throttle up a little bit down the hill. This is going to come to a pretty sharp right-hander in a second. Easy to get caught out here. Down to the second gear. Slide it on in. Ooh, running a little bit wide. You can hear one of the alphas behind me. Big grunt from the engine. Long left-hander now. You just dance the wheel, dance the throttle in this car. Get up to third for just a second, go a little faster on the next laps, and we'll come to one of the first squares. This is probably the tightest corner on the circuit, actually. This and the next one. But we'll keep it in second for both of them. The Monopasto here has enough grunt to get us through the corner. Whoa, swing out wide. Maybe I can take one of these cars on the outside. Trying to correct from the oversteer there. Oh, Maserati gonna get the power down, get around me. All right, just get it collected back together through another square here, and now we'll head to the narrowest part of the circuit. And absolutely love this part. Hopefully we'll get a couple clear laps during this race to actually fly through here. But big walls on either side. It reminds me a lot of, I don't know what it actually reminds me of. Very cool, unique type atmosphere. Very Italian is what it reminds me of. Feels right racing around this circuit. the top of the hill. Easy to run wide here and we'll start heading back downhill. A couple long left-hander corners. Keep it in third for this first one, but a lot of off-throttle time. Get back on the throttle. I can see one of the Alfa Romeos right behind me. Now second gear here, penultimate corner. Very easy to run wide there and yes, you can absolutely hit all those trees and everything. So very terrifying course. We'll come though to complete the first lap. Use the Alfa Romeo's top speed, see if I can pass at least one of these Maseratis. Come down to the first corner again, back down to second gear, snuck up behind the only non fully red car on the grid, but I'll give him a break. It's painted like the Italian flag. here around this left-hander. Not able to get the power down as fast as I could down this hill, but maybe good because it's saving me from running wide. Let's see if I can get around the left side. Just don't want to tangle wheels or anything like that with these cars. Spit of flame from the car in front. Just keep my eyes on the mirror there too. second for this run through. Whoa. Slide the car there. It's going to break out wide. Uh, the Maserati coming back on me. I'll try to stick it back up the inside. Ooh, maybe get both of them. <laughs> A little overly aggressive move. Tapping wheels slightly. Oh. All right, just get the power down. We got tangled up a little bit there. Hopefully the suspension's all right. One of the Maserati's getting back by. I can't see where the other one is. Maybe he spun out behind me. Not the way you want to pass, but <laughs> netting out to no positions gained there. All right, we'll come up to this quick right left-hander. It can go so much quicker through here if I'm not following another car. Basically want to use as much of the track as possible. Get really comfortable with the walls there on the inside especially. Big curbs around the whole track. It's one of the things that reminds me about Monaco and you have to watch out for those. It's so easy to hit a curb and spin the car out if, uh, if not worse. Get on the throttle here. Want to just fly it up the inside here but it wouldn't work. Get it back down to second gear. We'll try to get a good run through the final corner and over the bridge. All right, up to third. Just pedal down. Might be able to get around one of these guys. Try to outdo it into the braking zone. He gives up on it. Just want me to run into him like the other car. All right, so on the third lap now. Just got one more Maserati. I think up in front are the Alphas, the other Alphas. It's 
a faster car overall, but around the circuit you can see how it's not so unbalanced. I think if we were to take these cars to something like a Monza, it would be no contest. The Alfa would absolutely dominate here, but around a track like this, the Maserati is not too slow. It might be even easier to drive than this one. of the rev range. It feels like you have no power until you suddenly hit the top of the rev range. So we're going to dive it up the inside of this 46 here and maybe not make contact with him. Ooh, we're going to understeer a bit again. He's going to do the over-under on me. Struggling to get grip. Oh, I've been able to get in front of him there. Alright, just focus forward now. Try to get a little bit of a gap. clip that apex. It's a long late apex around that corner. Get up to third gear here for a second. Back down to second. Really rev out the engine. It's a short race so no need to worry. I think I was reading in the real Grand Prix here they would run about 50 laps of this circuit which would be really tiring. Even in a sim I can't imagine in real life. Alright we'll come down the hill now. So we got another Alpha in front and then another Maserati. I haven't been looking at my position or anything like that. We'll check it across the line. Over some of the bumps. The bumps and everything that are modeled here are so good. You can see the car is not just riding flat on really any part of the track. So P4 with two laps to go. There's actually another car in front of these two. Whoa, up on speed. Looks like this P3 might be being held up by the Maserati. Let's see if I can squeak by these two though. But the track surface itself is so nice to see because a lot of these tracks, the older circuits, end up coming out and they're, you know, smooth as a billiard table, smooth as a pool table, and it's it's just not how they worked. It wasn't possible to make roads that smooth. It's not that the roads were all cracked with holes in them. It's just that type of technology didn't exist. And this has a lovely feel to it. You just get a lot of bumps to correct the car a lot. All right, get it down a second here. I'm gonna run a little bit wide. I'm gonna gas it up out of this corner. See if I can maybe do my move again up the inside here steer a bit, but a lot tidier this time than the past few laps. So passing the one P3 there, just got a Maserati in front and then somebody else <laughs> who's gone. Maybe Nuvolari. Oh, getting a good run out of that corner, but I'm gonna come up to the really narrow section. Not sure there's a good place to pass here out of it. I gotta back out of it. There's just no way. And it's like you're racing through tight side streets in a town. It's amazing to have a track like this. Oh, gonna run a little wide there. It's really easy to nip the curbs on the outside, especially at the top of the hill here where the car gets light. Sliding the tires there, you can hear him wake up. All right, we'll just line it up. Should be able to blow past this car on the front straightaway, hopefully. Get that power down, one more lap to go. P3, should be able to get P2 here around the outside. Skill alone. We'll come up to the first corner, down to second gear. I got nobody to chase now, so it's gonna be Pure, pure remembering where to brake, where to slow down, keep the car in check. But such a lovely course. I love how this track flows. You see a lot of the tracks from 
the old days, you know, taking a look at like Avis, but also you know, some of the ones that exist, Pes- Pescara, you know, being one. Uh, they're just straight lines. Reams comes to mind. A lot of connecting towns on highways. And uh, for simming, you just don't have the nuance that they would have had with the mechanical you know, aspects of the car, as well as everything that could possibly go wrong and the little details in the road surface and things. So racing on those types of tracks is just not as interesting as it would have been. And even in real life, I'm sure it wasn't the most interesting. So something like this is so refreshing. It's just a really nice track to race some older cars around. We're gonna run a little wide here, even without trying to pass somebody. Had my eye on the mirror there for a second. Wake up the car a little bit there. It's really a lot of quarter throttle happening. It's so easy to spin the wheels. But there we go, nice apex there. between these walls. Get back down to second here as we'll head up the hill. A couple of brave souls there on the outside of the track. All right up to the edge. Nice run through the top of the hill. So much quicker than some of the AI through there. Or at least those guys back there. I got one car way up ahead, so it doesn't look like I'll come out the victor here. So we'll come to the final couple of corners. Back down a second. A little scary there, throwing it in. All the trees and the poles and everything, unexposed. But here we come to the line. To finish second. So there you have it, another amazing car and track combination. This track is so nice. Uh, it's a really fun track to race. It looks amazing and everything. A lot of times I'll concentrate on the technical part to this, but this one races really fun. And I can see uh, a lot of laps being turned here. I'll see if I can get maybe a league race or something or uh, an online race going. Now that it's available also for Automobilista and Assetto Corsa, uh, there's a lot of options with racing online. I, I know the R Factor 2 version does exist as well, and I think there might be a couple technical glitches with that, uh, but he still released it just to, to have it available. But yeah, the versions for Automobilista, this version for Assetto Corsa are absolutely stunning. And it's just another great older Grand Prix track to race on. Normally when I take a look at something new that came out, I'll race it for a couple hours, uh, make sure I know, you know, what it's like and everything, and then make a video of this. And I will not lie, I've probably raced six six hours on this this afternoon uh, in a few different cars, just because it's a lot of fun. And so I hope, uh, hope folks enjoy this, taking a look at this track. It's uh, definitely one to check out. I know pay mods aren't everybody's, you know, cup of tea, but the work here is just so good. I think it's easily worth the three pounds. It's like $4. Uh, for, for a version of the track and you can buy uh, the, the combined set of Corsa and Autobot Ballista versions for like $5. So I think $5 is worth it for something like this. Of course, I'll put the link uh, in the description and everything and tell Italo Tracks how much you love this. I think he's working on a few other cool tracks as well. And so I'm very excited for what's to come here. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed the Napoli Grand Prix. Uh, I can see myself racing here many, many more times. So thank you for watching and I'll see you all again next time.